If you think you know everything amazing or interesting that there is to know about languages, well, think again. I bet there are at least 17 facts in this video that you never saw coming. <gasps> so grab a pen and start tallying up your wins. There are more than 7,000 known languages in the world. The exact number, as I record this video, is 7,117. But that could change tomorrow. Why? Well, 6,000 of these are indigenous languages, and 90% of them have fewer than 100,000 speakers. But there's no telling how many unknown languages there are, since some places are a little scary to walk into. Half of planet Earth's population speaks only 23 languages. That's right, here are the top 20. But it gets worse because half of the 7,000 languages are doomed. Firstly, because no children speak them, and secondly, because they have no written form. So, you know, who's recording them? Third, UNESCO says that those indigenous languages I mentioned are in big trouble because the speakers are losing their natural homes. Not pointing fingers here, but food for thought. Japanese has three different systems for writing, and you have to use all three of them to make sense. If you're curious, here is a cool video with more. The first language spoken in outer space was, of course, Russian. And this was the very brave Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. The city with the most languages spoken is New York City. Surprise, well, it is a city of immigrants after all, and the most linguistically diverse city in the world, with over 800 languages accounted for. But how's this for amazing? Cities like NYC sometimes become strongholds for languages that have since gone extinct in their mother countries. This language has no numbers. The Pitaha have no numbers. Not only do they not have words for numbers, they also have no words for colors. So to describe red, they will say blood-like. In 1980, someone decided to try and teach them how to count. Eight months later, no one could even add one plus one, and they all flunked it. More of the story? Well, the concept of counting is best learned early on. And if your language has no numbers, yeah, forget about it and go fishing instead. The Hopi language has no words to express time, and no words even for past, present, or future. So how on earth do they know what is going on? This is pretty cool and kind of mind-bending as well. The Hopi do not see time the way that we do on a, on a timeline. To them, there is only the experience and the yet to be experienced. I mean, imagine if you couldn't separate time into months, Junes and Septembers. I'd be forced to say, hey guys, we have some Scandinavian language courses coming out later, starting, uh, you know, when it's hot and humid, uh, at least in Arizona. Not sure what month that might be. Oh, maybe I should try that. See, it turns out our mother tongue influences our thoughts far more than we realize. And before I plunge into that rabbit hole, here's number eight. This language has so many clicks Eventually, everyone grows a lump on their larynx. They call it humanity's most complex language, and if you fancy learning it, I'm afraid I cannot help you this time. It is an ancient language spoken by about 3,000 semi-nomadic people of Botswana and eastern Namibia. 82% of the vocabulary starts with a click. But it's not just the clicks. There is an astonishing array of unusual sounds. It has the most consonants of any language on the planet. And depending on the dialect, there are 58 consonants, 31 vowels, and four tones. Or 87 consonants, 20 vowels, and two tones. Or is it 130 consonants? Yeah, I give up. The growth in your natural vocabulary tends to stop at middle age. Yeah, that's right, but you have a choice, so don't let that stop you. Go and do the exact opposite. And if you want a head start, you click these three buttons here. They're practically a youth elixir for your brain, at least. The last language to go extinct was on the 5th of May, 2023. And I am unfortunately not joking, but if you can pronounce this language, well, you win. I'm going to stick with the easy version, Columbia Moses or Winachi. <laughs> It's a southern interior Salish language of Idaho in the US, and the last living speaker was a lovely 96-year-old woman. Very sad. Hawaiian has at least 200 words for rain, which is almost the best thing I heard this week, until I asked, well, what about words for rainbow? 
Amazing. Hawaiian has words for earth clinging rainbows, standing rainbows, double rainbows, misty rainbows, moon bows. All very fitting, of course, because Hawaii is also where you will see the best rainbows on planet Earth. Zimbabwe has the most official languages, 16 of them. But some feel it depends on what you can actually call official, and there is, of course, a bit of controversy here. A country can have as many official languages as it wants. Zimbabwe has 16, but most people are Shona, and only three languages are very widely used. India has 22 official languages, but the constitution only recognizes them at regional level, giving Zim the edge. How about Bolivia, though? Well, they have 37 official languages that are official at regional level, but some are extinct. So, yeah. As for South Africa, their 11 official languages are all used officially and are considered equally important. So, glad that I am not the one deciding. The world's youngest language? Afrikaans. Captain, Spandy, sailor. Seven million South Africans speak it, and officially it's only 100 years old. Afrikaans was derived from 17th century Dutch, with influences from Malay, Portuguese, French, German, English, and Khoikhoi languages. It was declared an official language on the 8th of May 1925. No longer a dialect of Dutch, but its own thing. The birth of Afrikaans is considered a remarkable feat, because it started off as a pigeon and became a complete language, and one that they fiercely fight for. The longest word in English takes three hours to pronounce, but here it is at super speed. Okay, okay, we get the point. It is the largest protein ever discovered, but what to call it? Well, there is a rule for this, of course there is. To name a protein, you have to name every single atom in it, even if it has 34,350 different atoms per molecule. A name with this many letters? Let's just call it Titan. There are about 70 whistle languages in the world. In the BC days, clever people living in mountainous regions thought of a great way to gossip with the neighbors, like a long way away. If you were good, your whistle could be heard 10 kilometers away. Uh, certainly, I wouldn't manage to pull that off. You still get these whistle languages in some remote places, and every one of them is based on the local spoken language. My question is, what happens when you start losing your teeth? The Aymara language flips past and future around. It does. Okay, so you know how we map the future as if it were in front of us and the past as if it were behind us? Well, most languages and cultures of the world do this, but not the Aymara who live in the Amazon. <laughs> If you are an insomniac, well, I apologize in advance. The Aymara see time the other way around. Why? It's complicated. Quickest explanation, the past is something you've actually seen. So for that reason, it should be in front of you. The future is something you've never seen. So you know, get behind me, future. The average native English speaker knows 20 to 30,000 words, but you're probably aware of around 42,000 words. You just don't know how to use them all. Before we all feel too clever, though, ever try to count the words in a dictionary? Estimates vary from somewhere between about 400,000 and 2 million. Again, depending on how you count the words and depending on who is doing the counting. Counting all of the forms and all of the slang, you know, he might be right. Don't put that dictionary away just yet. At least half of the world is bilingual. How does that make you feel? Are you bilingual yet? Better get started. Papua New Guinea has 840 languages. The oldest ones are called Papuan languages, but get this, they don't even share a single root. They are split into dozens of unrelated families and they are the least documented languages of the world. So lots of excitement just waiting to happen there. And then you get the Austronesian languages, which are completely different. How did this crazy, beautiful diversity happen? Well, it is the world's most rural country, and not all of these jungles, swamps, mountains have even been explored. 
There is a language, there exists a language with only 12 letters. Length of vowels. Rotokas is definitely endangered as the number of speakers is declining. It is only spoken by a small percentage of people on the small island of Bougainville, Papua New Guinea. 12 letters, but only 11 sounds, because two letters actually have the same sound. Anyone know what language comes next with only 13 letters? Well, here is a clue. They have an awful lot of rainbows. There are more than 200 artificial languages. Elvish, Klingon, Esperanto. Help me out here, guys. There are more artificial languages were invented. They did not happen naturally. Most were invented for books or movies and some weird attempts at world peace. And in theory, anyone can invent an artificial language. Getting people to care that you did is another story. This language has no words for direction. It is an ancient Australian language that the Aboriginals have been speaking for thousands of years. And it was the first Aboriginal language ever written down. So you know you refer to uh, something from the point of view of where you are, right? My camera is in front of me, the door is behind me. These are egocentric directions, normal for most languages. But these guys don't see it that way. They use cardinal directions for everything. My camera is north, my door is south. Well, actually it's kind of west and east, but whatever. That kind of thing. Yeah. By the way, just south of this video, definitely south is a little something I'm going to give you for free. And you might know by now, and the reason I bring you these fun stories about languages is because I actually teach languages using stories. Stories are the most basic form of human communication. We've been tapping into stories for thousands of years. And if you, even if you take books away forever, people will keep telling stories. True ones, made up ones. We love our stories for learning new things. And I've left you something completely free in the description. It is a story learning kit with lots of goodies for learning languages through stories. Free things are cool, so go and grab your copy. 50% of twins have a secret language called cryptophasia. It's a classa. Classa label. No, classa. Remember this one when we get to number 26. Twin languages are usually based on their parents' language with lots of mispronunciation, wobbly grammar, and sound effects thrown in. But it turns into something secret that only they can understand because they constantly imitate and reinforce each other. And in rare cases, twins have even invented entire languages. The first language ever written down was Sumerian. It was almost 5,500 years ago in Mesopotamia. It started off more like pictures, but by 2900 BC, Sumerians were writing words in wet clay with a reed. But Egyptian hieroglyphics are not far off. They appeared on small ivory tablets in about 3200 BC, and the first ink writing was found in Egypt. Cool, huh? Cambodian has the longest alphabet in the world with 74 letters. That's 33 consonants and 41 vowels. <laughs> It descended from the Brahmi script of ancient India, and it is complicated to learn, so we will tackle that another day. Your personal way of speaking is called an idealect. If you put your idealect with a bunch of other people's idealects that sound similar to yours, you get a dialect. And a dialect is just one version of one language. So are you special? Of course you are. Unless you have a twin, of course. In Polish Scrabble, the fifth most common tile is a Z. I'm on four now. Grzegorz Brzęczystykiewicz. 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 No surprise that Polish Z is only worth one point, but there are also extra Zs with diacritics, so what if we count those? If you ever play Polish Scrabble, let me know. Polish words are notorious for having so few vowels, and you can see what I mean right here and just weep. The Taki Taki language has only 340 words. That's right, if you want to hear it, buy a ticket to Suriname. Suriname is the only country in South America where the official language is not a Latin language, it's actually Dutch. But Dutch is just one of the 14 local languages. There's Javanese, Hindustani, Chinese, but don't panic, you can just speak Taki Taki. Now, Taki Taki is an English-based Creole that supposedly only has 340 words, at least according to the Guinness Book of Records. Okay, we don't believe a word of it. Here's a truer fact. You can never know how many words are in a language. After all, what counts as a word? This will keep you guessing. About 46 languages only have a single speaker, and these single speakers are all very, very old. What should we do about this? 
Well, we keep learning languages. That is what we do. Basque is a mystery language that has absolutely nothing in common with any other language on Earth. Nobody knows where it came from, but it's very, very old. The oldest living language in Europe, in fact. Basque is actually a modern version of a pre-Indo-European language called Aquitanian. How crazy is that? People speak it in the far north of Spain, so how on earth did it never mix with Spanish or French? 1,000 years from now, English will sound completely different. Languages are constantly evolving and English has changed a lot since 1,000 years ago. Plus, every single non-English country speaks English a little bit differently. Mayday, mayday. Hello, can you hear us? This is the German Coast Guard. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? English is doomed to evolve, fated, I'm afraid. If you don't like this idea, well, I'll stop using the lazy words. Use the good ones. And finally, nobody knows where language came from. After all that, we, we don't have a single clue. Yet we somehow know that languages have existed since 100,000 BC. And if you want to hear the popular theories for where language came from, there are some real crackers in this video right here.